Hi, this is Dr. Eric Thomas speaking for Nutmeg Dermatology, and today I thought we would talk about a pretty common condition. A little less than 3% of people in the United States have psoriasis. First thing to realize is that this is an inflammatory condition. If you could see the chemicals and all the things going on in the skin of a person with psoriasis, you'd see that there was irritation and inflammation. Kind of interesting because there are comorbidities, which are conditions that are occasionally, not always, seen together with psoriasis. There is a small but definite increase in certain forms of arthritis, especially involving the hips, knees, back, the large joints, sometimes the small joints too, and there's a slight bump up in diabetes and some people feel heart disease. So in the old days, prior to 1980s, we used to say, well, it doesn't look good, we can do better, but sometimes people would say, I've lived with it my whole life, it doesn't matter, it's not going to affect my health. But now we know that it can affect your health. Having all of that inflammation floating around in your body is not a good thing. First of all, though, we have to be able to say that you actually have psoriasis. Sometimes that's very easy. There are typical areas, elbows, knees, scalp, less commonly base of spine, around the belly button, and also, unfortunately, sometimes are the palms or the soles. But that's helpful, but it doesn't really give us the whole answer. For example, there is a type called inverse psoriasis. Well, guess what? Instead of showing on the outside of the elbows and knees, it shows on the body folds, the inside, and therefore uh, it would be nice if we had a blood test for psoriasis, but we really don't. Nevertheless, it's usually fairly simple, but I've seen people come in the office who've been told they have psoriasis, but there are such differences such as perhaps a lot of itching. Well, psoriasis can itch, but it's usually not a major sign. So occasionally we do a biopsy, and that's not usually necessary, just to confirm it. For example, there is a fairly uncommon, thank goodness, condition called, you ready for this one? Para, P-A-R-A, -A, para psoriasis. There are several types of it. One type is a precancer, and certain, certain types can look a bit like ordinary psoriasis. Anyway, let's assume that the diagnosis is psoriasis. When does it occur? Well, a couple of peak incidences, uh, teens, 20s, and then 40s, 50s. Are there different types of psoriasis? You better believe there are. I've already mentioned inverse, which is the opposite of the ordinary psoriasis you see, but there is a sort of explosive form called guttate, G-U-T-T-A-T-E, which is usually associated with a strep throat, whether it's recognized or not, and it doesn't have to be the type group A beta hemolytic that shows up on a doc's quick test in the office. There are other families of strep that can stimulate the immune system. There's even one called erythrodermic uh, or exfoliative psoriasis, which is quite a bit more serious and can cause shaking chills. So how do we treat psoriasis now that we know we should treat it? Well, I like to think of the treatment of psoriasis as a layer cake. The bottom of the layer cake, the most common way, is to use various creams. And they can work, steroid creams, or ointments work fairly quickly, but uh, unfortunately, if you keep using them, resistance sets in. Uh, technically, or we call it tachyphylaxis. So I've seen people who come in and say, gee, I've been using this cortisone steroid cream, prescription, prescription strength usually, over-the-counter's kind of weak. And uh, it worked pretty well for a couple of months, but I keep using it and it does nothing now. So you really have to usually think of steroid creams as being pulsed. Using it fairly hard for a week, two or three, 
taking a vacation. Any other creams? Well, there is a distant relative of vitamin D called calcipotrian, and that can work. It's a lot less quick to work, but it can be used safely, such as uh, genital area or facial areas where steroid creams have side effects. Steroid creams, if used too much, produce broken blood vessels and dilated uh, pores and so forth, acne and so forth. So it's a good idea to have options. Now, older options, which are available without a, a prescription, included uh, tar. Uh, unfortunately, for tar to really work well, it has to be fairly strong, fairly crude. There was a, a woman out in uh, Africa who had little else to offer her patients, so would have friends in London send little bottles, and she would literally go get a pail of tar from the road crew, make it up into a greasy ointment, and of course, remember, this was also where there was a lot of sun, and tar is a photosensitizer, so she was doing a modified form of what we call a Geckerman regimen. She knew what she was doing, but it does work, but I don't recommend it here. It'll smell, and there are dangers. There are a few other uh, ointments, but they're usually uh, a little difficult to get or uh, can um, actually stain. So that's the bottom layer of our layer cake. Is there a second layer? Hey, you can't have a cake without a couple of three layers, right? The middle layer is one that is near and dear to my heart and works pretty well, called a narrow band. It's a special form of ultraviolet light. Narrow band ultraviolet B. Yeah, uh, light, believe it or not, I know you go out and you may get too red and get hot and you know the sun can damage you, and that's absolutely true. But a very low dosage, especially of a type of uh, sunlight, uh, the narrow band of ultraviolet B, actually suppresses the immune system. So we use it in our office, both in a full body, a box, uh, and if there are localized areas, we have a laser that is great. It uh, delivers the light, however, only in small areas about this size. You could go through elbows, knees, are particularly good for palms, hands. Psoriasis the hand is really a problem. By the way, it also works for eczema of the hands, but it is a wonderful way. Also, if a person's hair is not too thick, we can use it in the scalp. And we have a number of people, one of them had extremely thin hair, the psoriasis suppressed or caused her hair to come out. Good news, bad news. Good news is the uh, laser light treatment worked great. It took a couple of months to actually get her hair to come back. Bad news, then it got a lot harder to get it through her hair. But we're still doing it as necessary. Don't use it all the time. Use it on and off. So, what is the crowning piece of our... You know, I want to go back a little bit. I mentioned narrowband ultraviolet B. Why not use a tanning salon? Would that work? I don't know, maybe a little bit. But there's a problem that bulbs in tanning slots are optimized to produce, duh, a tan. And although they may help in the initial stage of treating psoriasis or eczema, I don't recommend it because there's more damage to the skin in general. But most importantly, think about the anatomy for a minute. The inflammation is where the blood vessels actually come up close to the surface of the skin. This is the blood vessel. And tanning occurs just above that, just where the cells separate. So when you first start, you get a lot of light through because you don't have much tan. But as you tan up, it's like closing the shutter on a camera or turning Venetian blinds, closing them and there's less ability to get the light where you need it, so it doesn't usually work too well. Back to the top layer of our layer cake, the crowning eminence, where you put the, ah, you know, the bride and groom or whatever in weddings, whatever. Uh, that is a newer techniques, newer things, last 10-15 eh, years, 
called Biologics. And these are, uh, there is one pill, I don't find it works too well. Uh, the others are injections, but the newest ones, like Skyritzi, only require once you're on it, once every three months. So these, oh, you've heard of uh, Umira, Skyritzi, Enbrel, there are four or five, six others. These all take a small slice out of the body's inflammatory reaction. And they differ a bit. They're not all look alike. Uh, some do the same thing. But there are certain chemicals that are called interleukins, and some affect interleukin-23 and some interleukin-14. You don't have to worry about it, but that's why some work a bit better than others. These are, some of them, are also approved to treat arthritis. And I remember one fellow whose psoriasis got quite a bit better, but he came in um, a few months later saying, skin's better, but I had not realized how achy I was, but I'm now, you know, much more flexible. You do have to have some uh, occasional blood work. Uh, since it does suppress the immune system, we have to be sure a person does not have a hidden infection, such as tuberculosis. But in any event, uh, psoriasis can be treated well. We can suppress it. It often will go away for months or even years at a time. But unfortunately, it is a genetic uh, predisposition, sometimes runs in families, and uh, you know, we cannot promise it will never come back. Of course, it's important to uh, keep your health up, and yes, stress will make it worse, can bring it on. However, uh, it's only one of multiple aggravating factors. Gee, usually in northern climates, it gets a bit worse in the uh, winter, perhaps because there is less natural ultraviolet light. But it occurs throughout the world, in all ethnicities, in all areas. So uh, I hope that you found this useful. It's my pleasure to bring this information to you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Hey, thanks a lot. This is Eric Thomas for Nutmeg Dermatology again.